Good morning, guys. I hope you're doing very well. So I wanted to share, I'm surprised I haven't done a video on this already, actually. I wanted to share with you my model hit and miss engine that I bought yeah, probably about a year and a half ago. Yeah, about a year and a half ago. And uh, it's a full working model, but it's just a scaled size. And I absolutely love it. It's so beautifully machined. So let's, um, let's go get it down. We'll talk about it, talk about where I got it from. And uh, of course, we're going to get it running right away as well. So here it is. I, you know, I absolutely love it. It's so charming. Uh, and the fact that it, you know, it's a fully functioning uh, hit and miss engine is, is just great. Um, for those of you that don't know, of course, each hit and miss engine can be very, very different in terms of the mechanical governing or the means of which the engine is governed. But the long and short of it is this one has centrifugal weights held together with a spring. Uh, as the RPM increases, the weights come out. Uh, it pushes the latch finger in and uh this essentially this this push rod rides on a little cam there the latch finger grabs the latch block that holds the uh, exhaust port open and then as the rpm decreases the weights come back together the latch finger comes off the latch block it closes the exhaust port compression can build fire and then repeats that process over and over again a uh, little fuel tank, little brass fuel tank. I run two-stroke fuel in here. It runs off three AA batteries. Quick word of warning if you're going to get this is to make sure that you always do turn it off because uh, leaving it on, there is a bleed somewhere. And I don't know where. Maybe it's normal. Maybe it's not. Uh, but all I know is just make sure you turn it off. It's a, a sweet little thing. It has one little rubber piston ring, a uh, little O-ring actually. And I've got some marks on here. I, I timed it for some fun and, and, and that was that was cool too. But uh, yeah, there's no uh, there's no cam for the intake. It's uh, atmospheric intake. So as uh, as the exhaust is closed, then it goes back. It will, as the piston goes back to bottom dead center, it will essentially just pull that that exhaust valve open. But uh, the only other thing I haven't got on here is the pull start. I took that off for some reason. I can't remember why I did. But I did. Um, so let's let's start it up. Oh, and also, yeah, this well, it's not a carburetor, but uh, you have a little needle here that uh, adjusts how much fuel it is letting. Um, obviously, a miniature spark plug, miniature HT lead, uh, and I grease, of course, all these little pivot points, little muffler. Uh, I, I what I do is put a piece of tissue under there because otherwise it spits two stroke oil out. But um, yeah, simple, delightful, elegant, and so beautifully machined. Um, you just you, you can't complain. Uh, it really is a lovely, lovely made piece. So uh, yeah, let's get this into the vice because there uh, there is quite a lot of force, and any time it fires, the whole thing just kind of flies around. So uh, we'll stick it in the vice and uh, we'll start it up. Okay, switch on, and we'll just go past top dead center a couple of times, pull some fuel in, and we'll see how we go. It might take a couple of times. There we go. It's off. So you can see, if I check the weights, I don't know if you can really see them. Yeah, well, they expand out. And you can see how the, the latch finger moves in and out. Uh, there. Maybe better from this angle. See how it catches the latch block? So then it will let go of it. It will close the exhaust, go through its compression cycle. Uh, fill compression. Fire. RPM increases, weights come out, and uh, that's it. Really simple, really lovely, and you know I live in a small, I live in a small unit, and uh, literally my this is my office. I've got a couple of other. If you haven't seen that green engine or sorts of villas that I did a full rebuild on, it took me ages, and I've documented it on this channel. Um, so I really haven't toolbox, haven't got much room in my office. I love my chainsaws. Um, so <laughs> I haven't got room for a full-size engine. Uh, and the courtyard is tiny as well. So uh, 
this is what I'm working with at the moment, but I love it. It's so quick and easy to start and run. And uh, yes, can't go wrong. I thought we'll just do a quick bump start too. So let's see if it works. We'll go past compression stroke, come back, and try again. Past the compression stroke. Nope. And take compression. There we go. <laughs> ah, I could just watch it running for ages. Oh, I really hope you enjoyed that. I love that engine. It just makes me smile. It's simple. It's something that you can, within 20 seconds, you can have it starting, running, and then 10 seconds later, you can put it away. Uh, and that's delightful in itself. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. So I got it from a website called banggood.com. Um, in fact, actually, I'm surprised at how good the quality is. The machining is beautiful. And they do, don't just do that style hit and miss. I think they've got about four other hit and miss engines or different styles of engines, different governing systems. They've got um, steam engines. They have hot air engines. Um, they've got a mixture of everything. So definitely check them out. Um, but I love it. Absolutely love it. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I had. And uh, I will speak to you guys very, very soon. Catch you later. Bye.